So my name is Laura Kersens, and I'm a Product Support Specialist at Safe Software, and I'm going to be leading you through this training course today and tomorrow. Uh, the goal of this course is to help give you a solid grounding in the design and creation of FME server hosted workspaces. The focus of this course will be on using FME Workbench to create workspaces that are optimized for use on FME server. This course does assume that you already have a basic understanding of how to use FME Workbench, at least to the extent that is covered in the FME desktop tutorial. So we're basically assuming that you can create a fairly simple workspace, one format to the other, and you know how to place transformers and interact with FME Workbench. Each session will take approximately 60 to 90 minutes to complete and will consist of a mix of presentation and demonstrations with some hands-on exercises. We'll be taking a 10-minute break every hour or so and we'll finish for the day at the end of four hours and then we'll start again tomorrow at the same time. So again, just a quick reminder, if you have any questions at all during this course, please ask your questions through the GoToWebinar questions panel. So you will have been sent a link to download the PDF file, which contains all the material for this course. So that would have been in your email with the instructions for connecting to your EC2 and everything else. Uh, this training manual is also available on your EC2 instance. So if you're logged into your machine, if you take a look inside the My Documents folder there, it will be found, you can find it under the FME Manuals folder inside there. So this is what I'm currently presenting and includes all the session examples that we will be working through during this course. Uh, so just some quick information about the manual itself. Uh, in, with inside the manual, you'll notice that there are several different icons. We've got tips, these are additional advice, cautions. Uh, these are warnings about things that might get you into trouble as you're working through your exercises. Uh, for those of you who've used FME before, the new icon will point out functionality that is new for FME 2014. And then Q&A are questions inside the manual to help solidify what we have covered. Examples marked by these check marks uh, are going to be done during the presentation and you can either work through them with me or just watch. When working through the exercises, there are additional advanced tasks marked the check mark with the plus next to it. Uh, you can try these if you finish the exercise early or if you want to try some additional functionality. Okay, so just to check that everyone's out there and everything's working properly, can you please raise your hand if you've worked with uh, FME Server before? This will also give me an idea of the level of experience in this group. Okay, so we have a lot of people who are pretty new to FME Server. Okay, so that's great. Thank you very much. It's good for me to be aware of this. Okay. Perfect. So I'll just give you a quick tour of your EC2 instance now. So we're on page uh, six in the training manual, VI, if you're following along. So your training machine is an Amazon EC2 instance. It contains an installation of FME server, FME desktop, and all of the data that we're going to be using during this course. So everything you need for all the exercises can be found on these machines. Uh, we're going to leave the machines running until four o'clock Pacific time tomorrow, and you're free to use the machines as much as you like until that time. So if you want to experiment and try out a few things on your own, uh, you're perfectly welcome to do that after the class has ended for today. Uh, when you're done with your machines, you can close remote desktop, but please do not shut down the remote EC2 machine. They are set to delete themselves when they're shut down. So if you turn it off, then you're not going to be able to get back in tomorrow. So just when you're done for the day, just close remote desktop and leave it at that. Uh, if you're looking for the training data, you can find that on the C drive in these machines. So if you go to uh, Windows Explorer down at the bottom, You'll see actually under favorites on the left hand side, we've got this shortcut to FME data 2014. This is where all the data and everything that we need for the course is going to be found. All right. 
So that's everything for this uh, brief introduction. So with that, we'll go into Chapter 1 in the FME Server Authoring Training Course. So if you are following along in your training manual, this is on page 1-3. If you're looking for your manual on your EC2 machine, you can open up Windows Explorer and you can find it under Libraries, Documents, and you'll see inside here we've got a directory called FME Manuals. And it's this one here, FME Server Authoring Manual 2014 SP1. So you can open that up if you'd like to follow along the instructions on the exercises when we get into those. Okay, and so let's start off with Chapter 1 then. So, what is FME Server? We can summarize the abilities of FME Server in terms of three core capabilities. We have self-serve, real-time, and automation. Self-serve refers to the ability to allow the end user to download the data they want in the format they need or upload their own data for transformation. Real-time is the ability to process real-time event and sensor data and send out notifications when specific events occur. And then finally, automation is FME server's ability to process data at a scheduled interval or automatically respond to incoming data without the need for manual intervention. So essentially, FME server provides a way to make data transformation workspaces built with FME desktop accessible over a network. It can provide many different ways to run workspaces, customize translations, and deliver output data. Server itself does not include a tool for creating workspaces, so FME Desktop must be used to build them. So within FME Server, there is a set of different roles that are available for different kinds of users. The first type of user would be an author. So an author is typically an experienced FME user. An author's role primarily involves creating workspaces using FME Workbench and publishing them to FME Server. The authoring role is the one that we're going to be concentrating on during this course. So we're going to be looking at how to build workspaces configured uh, to work uh, well inside FME Server. Another type of user we have is the user itself. So this is a person who would be accessing data through a service on FME Server using, for example, the default FME Server web interface or through a custom web application built on top of FME Server. The user does not necessarily need to have any experience with FME or even know that FME is being used in the background. Next, we have a developer. This would be a person who would create applications that submit jobs to FME Server and handle the results. Web developers can also make use of the FME Server services within their own web applications using the FME Server API. And then finally, we have the administrator. So this would be the person who is in charge of the installation and maintenance of the FME Server. The administrator's tasks might include things like planning the system architecture, installing prerequisite applications, monitoring the FME Server services, and so on. Uh, so this diagram just gives a brief, just gives a, a, an overview of what the architecture of FME Server looks like. We're not going to get into too much detail on this right now, but we'll take a look at some of the main components that are relevant to the context of this class. So right now we'll just take a look at the engines, which are pictured down here, the server core over here, and the server web services, which are up above at the top here. So it's the front end to FME Server, which is in the back end on the side. So the FME engines, so these are the, uh, the green boxes pictured here, these are what actually carry out job processing on FME Server. The engines themselves are the same core engine as what is used when running a workspace using FME Desktop. Each engine processes one job at a time, and additional engines can be added to server to increase the processing power of your server. 
engines can be installed either on the same machine as the server core or on separate computers for a distributed environment. Next, the server core. This takes care of job management, so it deals with queuing, request, request routing, distributing jobs to the engines, and scheduling. Uh, it also manages repository contents, so it keeps track of all the workspaces that have been published to server, any custom formats, custom transformers, and all the data that's been uploaded to the server as well. And finally, it also takes care of processing and sending notification requests. And the third component we'll look at here are the web services. FME Server itself uses a service-oriented architecture to bring all the capabilities of the FME platform to a server environment by providing a means of communication between the server and clients. Each service provides a unique function that can be accessed from the web interface. So we'll take a closer look at each of these services in the next few chapters during the training. Uh, FME Server can be deployed in a number of different ways. So it can be installed on a variety of different types of platforms. So for example, it can be installed locally on your own hardware systems. You could also install it on your own virtual hardware, provided um, on your own virtual hardware. Or it can be provided as a serv uh, or, or you can have it through FME Cloud, hosted by us at Safe Software on a pre-configured Amazon virtual machine. So the first two involve you installing FME Server yourself, and the third one is uh, FME Server as a service. Um, FME Server can be installed on a, as a distributed system in which various components of the server, the engines and so on, are installed on a computer separate from the FME Server host. And it can, be also, it can also be configured for failover in which a backup server host can be configured to take over if the primary server host should fail. So that's just a quick, uh, just with a diagram of what that type of architecture might look like. So it just gives you an idea of what's possible. Uh, again, we're not going to get into details on installation right now or during this course at all. Okay. So with that, after that brief introduction to server, we're now going to take a look at the FME server web interface itself. So we're starting off with exercise 1A and that's on page 1-8 in the training manual. So as we, were, uh, as we walk through this exercise, you're more than welcome to follow along yourself on your own EC2 machine, or you're welcome to just watch as well. So whatever your preference is, I'd recommend following along as much as possible. It helps to, to get that hands-on experience with the FME server itself. So with that, we'll just follow the steps here to connect to the server web interface itself. So to connect, just open up your web browser. So we have Chrome as a shortcut down in the, uh, the start menu on these EC2 machines. And I'll just open up a new tab here. So in step one here, it shows you how to connect through your web browser. So you go to HTTP slash slash your server name slash FME server. Uh, these servers are installed locally on these EC2 machines, so we can just log in using localhost. So, HTTP, localhost, slash, forward slash, FME server. So just type that in your browser and click enter. Uh, another way to connect to the server, if you'd like, you can go to the start menu from the bottom in your EC2 machine, so go to Start, Programs, FME Server, and you'll see here under the FME Server folder, there is a shortcut to the web user interface, and that takes you to exactly the same spot. So if you just want to use the shortcut instead, you can click there, and it'll take you to the login page as well. Okay, so with that, we can log in to FME Server. So the username and password that's been configured on these machines is pretty straightforward. So it's just log in with a username admin and a password admin. So they're both the same. So if you type that in for the username admin 
and then the password is admin as well, both lowercase, and click login to enter into the server interface. So you can take a look at the user interface here. So from the main home page, let me just stretch this out a little bit. Uh, you can just see at a glance all the information about the server itself. So right here on the right hand side, we have a list of all the engines that are currently active for this particular server. So we see we have two engines that are running and available, both 32-bit. So it just gives you some information about what's going on there. You can see down in the bottom left-hand corner, you can see the server version and the build number. And then on the left-hand side, we have links to all the various components inside FME Server. So these are all the parts or the pieces that you can make use of to um, build up your workflows inside FME Server. So what we'll take a look at now is this repositories link. So just click on that. And this shows a list of all the repositories that exist on the server already. So these are two that are, in, that are part of the default installation for FME Server. So you've just got a set of samples and some utilities in here. Uh, repositories, you can kind of think of them as essentially folders inside FME Server. So you use these to store and organize your workspaces that have been published to the server. So if you click on the samples repository here, you can see a list of all the workspaces that have been published to this particular repository. And then we'll also take a look down here at the jobs link. So if you click on this, this gives you access to basically all the job history on, on these servers. So you can see a list of all the jobs that have been run or have completed. You can see a list of any jobs that are queued, so that are waiting for an available engine, and any jobs that are currently running, so that are currently active. So you should see you probably have about one completed job on your server already. And that'll correspond to that remote desktop file that was generated. So that was actually generated using FME server. So there's a workspace that was run to create those files to connect to your uh, EC2 instances. And then down below we have more links to other components of the server itself. And we'll take a closer look at each of these uh, in the next few chapters in the training. Uh, but the jobs and the repositories will be the two that we use the most during the next few exercises. Okay. So with that, let's just go on to page 1-11 in the training manual. We'll take a look at the next section inside the uh, FME Server web interface. So FME Server includes options for configuring security, which allow for the server administrator to control exactly who has access to what parts of the server. All security information is stored in the repository database. So it's essentially a database that is part of the server installation that keeps track of all these settings, these security settings, keeps track of all the workspaces and everything that's been configured on the server itself. All security, um, sorry. So the security information that's stored in that database can be managed through the server web interface. So you can see the security link at the bottom or kind of midway through the list there. Uh, security in FME server is set up through a system of users and roles. Each role essentially corresponds to a type of user, such as author, administrator, and so on. And each user account can be associated with one or more roles, depending on the kind of access you want that particular user to have. So roles are managed under the Roles Policies tab under the Security section in the server web interface. And there are many types of security policies that can be set for each role. So you can see here we've got some general settings, basically allowing a particular user to access to each of these different um, links on the left-hand side. So if you don't want a particular user to be able to manage security, you can turn that off and they won't see that listing on the page. So they won't be able to access that part of the server. 
Uh, you can control topics that's related to the notification service, uh, which we'll talk about later, but basically you can prevent a particular user from being able to read or write or publish to a specific topic. Uh, you can also manage resources. So these are those folders that, uh, so resources are basically files and data sets that are stored on FME server. So you can allow specific users access to particular resources, so particular files that are up there, and allow them to either read, write, upload, or delete permission for those. You can give users access to specific services, so if you only want one user to be able to run workspaces but not, say, upload data, you can control that. And you can also control access to repositories. So you can see here on this example at the bottom of the page, for each repository or each folder on FME server, you can control whether a user can download the content, can read what's inside that, can publish workspaces to that particular repository, if they can run workspaces from that repository, or delete items from the repository itself. So it's lots of control over exactly what a user can do when they interact with the server. Um, so you can also control access to components. So these are different pieces of workspace functionality. So you could maybe uh, prevent a user from being able to run workspaces using the FME server job submitter transformer. Uh, let me just open up the security tab here. I'll just show you what I'm looking at. So I'm looking under role policies. That's what I'm walking through right now. Here we go. Just take a second to load up. There we are. And so here we've got the general options. So these control these left-hand navigation. We've got topics next. So these are related to the notification service. The resources themselves. So these are folders and data files up on FME server. Specific services. The repositories, so this controls what kind of permission a user has to interact with the repository contents. And then we've got components here, so specific transformers, so a particular user can't log in using a particular transformer if you don't give them permission. And then finally applications, so you can allow users to only interact with the server web interface and not be able to log into the server through FME Workbench, for example. Okay, so with that, we'll take a look at modifying some of the security settings. This is example exercise 1B, and that's on page 1-14 in the training manual. So let's just take a look at how it looks to log into server with different users. So for this example, let's log out of our admin account. So to log out, just click on the, the username in the top left-hand corner, or top right-hand corner. So you click Admin, just click that drop-down, and choose Log Out from here. And now let's log in with the guest account. So we'll log in. So the username for this is guest, G-U-E-S-T. And the password is the same, guest, G-U-E-S-T. And we'll log in. And you should see, when you try that, you'll get an error message down at the bottom. You are not authorized to access this web application. So what that indicates is that this particular user, the guest account, does not have permission to log into the server web interface. So they're not able to access anything on the server. So let's modify that setting and allow our guest users to log into the web interface. So to do that, we'll need to go back in as our admin account so that we have access to the security settings. So we'll log in as admin again, and then admin is the password. And from here, just click on security from the left-hand side. So you can see inside here, our admin user has an admin role, and our guest user 
is configured with the FME guest role. So this is the role we're going to have to modify if we want to make a change for this particular guest user to be able to log into the web interface. So we can adjust the role policies or the settings that this particular role is allowed to access through the role policies tab at the top. So click on role policies. From the drop down here, we'll select our guest role. So just click the drop down arrow and select FME guest. So you'll see inside here, this user does not have access to very much inside the server. So they have no access to anything here. And very few options checked down through the rest of this. So to allow this user to be able to log into the web interface and maybe see all the repositories that exist on the server, let's give them, let's change two options inside here. So the first one will be under the general section we want to give them access to manage the repositories so they can actually see uh, some of the repositories up on the server. So just click the checkbox there to allow that. And the second option we'd like to allow is to let them log into the web interface itself. And that can be configured down at the bottom here. So we'll see under applications at the very bottom of the uh, role policies, we have the FME server web user interface. So click the checkbox there to allow access to the interface. Just take a note here of repositories. We'll see this user has access to read and run workspaces inside the samples repository, but no access to anything in the utilities repository. So once we've made those two changes, so we've checked on the server web user interface and the manage repositories, click apply changes. This saves these changes to the database in the background of FME server. And now let's log out of our admin account. And we'll log back in as guest. So username guest, password guest. And we'll see this time we didn't get an error message. And now we're inside the FME server web interface. But you'll see there's a few differences from when we log in as an administrator. First of all, you'll notice that we can't see the list of engines. and We also don't see any information about the server build itself. And this navigation on the left-hand side is significantly shorter than it was as an administrator. This is because the guest account only has access to the repositories. If we click on that, we'll see that they only have the ability to see the samples repository. So the utilities are no longer listed down at the bottom because we did not give our guest access to that. So those are the basics of being able to configure security options on, inside FME server. Okay, so with that, that's the end of the first chapter here. So just a brief overview of how to interact with the server web interface and kind of what FME server is all about.